everyone, my name is Python, and as I'm sure you've realised by now from my Minecraft survival series, I love to play on the Minecraft snapshots to see what new features are coming our way. With this, however, there's sometimes terrain generator changes that are introduced, and as such, new chunks will need to be generated in order to see the new content. Now, I'm not someone who really wants to go exploring thousands of blocks out to generate new chunks, so what I do is delete the chunks around where I have built in my worlds and have those chunks regenerate. Now, there is an easy way to do this with the stable versions of Minecraft using a program called MC Edit, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. The issue is MC Edit doesn't really work with Minecraft snapshot worlds. For me anyway, I just get continuous crashes. So I figured out the way to delete chunks in your Minecraft world without the use of MC Edit. Now buckle in folks because this is quite involved. It involves some maths and if you get this wrong, you might wind up deleting parts of your world you've built in. You have been warned. So, let's begin with the tools you'll need. You'll need paper and a pen or something to jot down some numbers on, access to your .minecraft folder, and you'll also need a program called NBT Explorer, link of which can be found in the description. Alrighty guys, so here we are in our world that we're going to be pruning chunks from. As you can see, we're in a snow biome here. We've got our small little house right here. And this is the thing that we do not want to get rid of in our world. So as you can see, the ocean biome is right there. We are indeed in 1.12. And as you can see, there's no new ocean stuffs. Now, what we're going to be doing today is pruning all of the chunks around this base. So they all regenerate when we go ahead and try this world out in the 1.13 snapshot and what should happen is this ocean here should wind up starting to be full of life in that it'll have a bunch of kelp and a bunch of various other bits of bobs as well now to begin what we're going to do is we're going to press f3 and g and what this is going to do is it is going to bring up all of the chunk boundaries now we're also going to bring up the f3 screen and the numbers that we are going to be looking at is on the left hand side on the second chunk of text the third line down where it says chunk now, the first three numbers in the chunk line determine where you are within the chunk. But what we're going to be looking at is the second bunch of numbers on the chunk line where it says 740. That is the number of the chunk that we are in. Like it's not our position within the chunk, it's the actual chunk. So for example, if we went over this boundary, the number's going to change. So you saw that it went from 740 and when we went across the boundary, it went to 74 negative 1. And same when we go over this way, 840. 740. So these are the actual chunk numbers. Now these are very, very important because these are going to play a major part in uh, what we're going to be doing in NBT Explorer in just a bit. But the best idea I can come up with, and this is where the pen and paper comes in, is going ahead and taking down the four chunk numbers uh, and sort of forming a square. So for example, we've got ourselves the northwest corner here. Now as you can see, we've got a little, we've got a partial bit of the house, the decoration here. So this is going to be the northwest corner or the top left corner for the layman. So we need to go ahead and jot down the numbers 7, 4 and negative 1. So I'm just doing that right now. So 7, 4 and negative 1. Except to be honest with you guys, you could you could simply get away with just putting 7 and then negative 1. The 4 is the altitude that you are in. So as you go up and down, there you go. It went from 7, 4, 1 to 7, 5, 1. But in all honesty, you only need the 7 and then the negative 1. So the first number and the third number. So there you go. Alright, so if we head over to the northeastern area, again, we've got a very very uh, partial bit of the house here so this one is going to be eight and minus one so that is the top right corner all right and then all we need to do is take down the southeast and southwest so here we go we've got uh, quite a bulk of the house in this chunk here so this one is going to be the southeastern chunk so we've got eight uh, uh, eight four zero so we're just going to put down eight and zero and then of course uh, just by working it out from uh, you know just from mathematics it's going to be seven and zero for the southwestern chunk. So, uh, I'll try and put a little infographic on screen for you guys, but we've got the four corner points sorted out, and we've sort of formed, in air quotes, a square of the chunks that we're going to be keeping. All of the other chunks outside of this boundary here, for example, are going to be pruned. They're going to be deleted, 
and when we go into 1.13, uh, what we are going to notice is these are going to regenerate with the 1.13 chunks. So, let's go ahead into MBT Explorer and let's start having a look at all of these chunks. Alrighty folks, so welcome to my desktop. Now on the left hand side here, we have our .minecraft folder and for those of you guys unaware on how to do that, you uh, type in percent app data percent press enter and then there you go you got your dot micro folder at the top there and then uh, there you go it's all good now uh, something else i'd recommend is making sure that your hidden items are shown because well in my case i have my snapshot under a subfolder within the dot micro folder so the instance uh, doesn't interfere with the regular you know stable minecraft instance and the reason why you want hidden items is because if you head into mbt explorer it will default to going to with in your main Minecraft saves folder but in my case for example uh, we have ourselves uh, our user folder and then it's app data as you can see it's sort of faded out and that's because it's supposed to be a hidden folder but because we have that checked we can see the folder so it's app data roaming Minecraft and in my case I usually use snapshot go into saves and there you go Python as well That is what I use to uh, to delete chunks for Python as well every now and again So there you go just a little FYI, but anyways guys just for the sake of ease We're just going to be doing the regular Minecraft saves folder So there's the Minecraft saves folder We're going to go into the tutorial world as you can see here and uh, you can do this with the nether and the end as well If you so wish dim one is the folder which will contain the region files for your End, and then dim negative one is going to contain the region files for your nether uh, the region folder here is for the overworld so what we're going to go ahead and do is go into the region folder and as you can see there's a bunch of files here you probably won't be able to make sense of them but they are the things that contain the chunks for your world so what we're going to do in mbt explorer is we're going to try and navigate to the same folder so within our tutorial world we're going to go into region and as you can see there's the four same exact files now what we're going to want to do is go within some of these things and uh, check out where the chunk numbers are and the really useful thing about mbt explorer is each chunk it will say in world at zero zero so in my case what i'm looking for is seven negative one which i think is going to be in this one right here so we want negative so, sorry seven and then negative one so if we navigate down uh there it is seven and negative one and then we're also going to want 8 and negative 1. So those are the two chunks that we want to keep, okay? But everything else, we can go ahead and just delete. So I'm just holding shift and then going to the top and then simply hitting the delete key. So as long as 7 and negative 1 and 8 and negative 1 are still there, we will be absolutely fine and dandy. So on this one here, our 0.0, .0 this is going to take... This is going to contain all of the chunks at zero, zero, positive upwards. So this time we need seven and zero and then eight and zero. So if we head down, we want seven and zero right there. Everything above it can be deleted. And then, of course, we need eight and zero, which is right there. So again, as long as these two are kept, what it's going to mean is that our house is going to remain. But all of the other chunks are going to be deleted. So, yeah, now that we've got those two done, everything within these other two uh, chunk files can actually be deleted deleted because there we go because uh, these are going to be the chunks that contain all of the stuff surrounding the house but as long as we have the chunks that uh, we noted down before uh there you go you'll pretty much be done so there we go so let's go ahead and click save up here save all modified tags and uh, basically what should happen is now if we go into our minecraft instance let me just bring this over here let's go into the latest snapshot 18w16a and actually i just realized something before i do that i need to copy over the save folder for the tutorial world i need to save it over to my snapshot instance so uh, let's get rid of that one and let's copy over the modified one so there we go all right so let's start up minecraft here and uh, what we should notice is that the chunks will be regenerated with the 1.13 stuff so things like kelp and all those various other bits and bobs so let's go into single player there we go. And we want tutorial world. Yes, we are well aware that we're now using a snapshot. Uh, I've already backed it up, so we're already good. So let's do I know what I'm doing. And now what should happen is our house should still be where it is, but all of the chunks around it 
should be regenerated and it should say preparing spawn area. Yep, there we go. That is your proof that the chunks are indeed regenerating. Fantastic stuff. That's exactly what we need. Now, hopefully, if everything has been done right, and I'm pretty sure we have done it right, our house should still be here, and it is, and then the chunks around it have been regenerated, as you can see. They have been regenerated. We've got the brand new 1.13 stuffs now, ladies and gentlemen. We've got the cape. Cape? We've got the kelp, <laughs> and then we've got to solve some of these ice spikes, freaking, uh, like, icebergs and whatnot. Wow, this is the first time I've actually seen these things, legit. I haven't seen these in any of my other worlds yet. That's really cool. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you prune your chunks while keeping the stuffs that you want in your world. Now, of course, uh, you can do this for, like, other settlements as well. Just make sure you take down all of your chunks and make sure you keep the chunks within the MBT Explorer thing. And away you go. Now, I really hope that I have done a good enough job on explaining how you do this. Because, like I say, it is fairly advanced. It's fairly involved. Uh, and, uh, yeah... It does require some time, especially if you guys have, uh, like, very much more explored worlds. Like, this is a brand new world, for example. I haven't explored that much, so my region files, there wasn't many. So, yeah. But if you have larger worlds, then, yeah, it's going to take more time. I will say that. But, uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, on that note, it is time to end this tutorial here. Guys, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial or found it useful, please do be sure to drop a like rating and share this tutorial with your friends who may be wanting the new stuffs in their old worlds and uh, hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss out on future minecraft tutorials guys if you have any suggestions for things you want me to cover then uh, please do let me know in the comments area below but for now thanks for watching folks hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and i'll see you guys in the next video